Hey, my name's Zoe. I'm your co-host for Carrying Comfort News. You can find me at Twilik43 on all the social medias. My pronouns are she and they. Oh. Glitch is also having trouble hearing you. It's fine. There we go. Can you I turned my, turn myself up. I turned myself <laughs> up. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, how about now? Perfect. Great. Okay. Oh, great. 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 Before we get into our discussions today, my name is Wes. My pronouns are he, they, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Thirst Trap Moth. Uh, and uh, before we get started, I just want to talk about the graphic that you saw at the top of our show at the starting soon screen. Um, that is uh, the t the itch.io bundle, the uh, TTRPGs for trans right in Texas. It has over 490 independent developed TTRPGs that can be played by yourself with a group of friends or more, and you can get those all for as little as five dollars right now on itch. I have drop the link in the chat there uh what they are doing is they are collecting money for transgender education network of texas also known as tent as well as organization latina de trans in texas uh and so far they have raised over one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars for the two charities uh this is great uh it was spurred by a recent directive from texas governor greg abbott who uh, asked the State Department of Family and Protective Services to investigate instances of gender-affirming care for transgender kids as parental child abuse. Texas Move follows a larger national trend of the GOP attacking trans kids' health care. We'll talk about it more later in the show, but if you would like to, go give your money, go give your funds, and raise some cash for TENT, as well as Organización Latina de Trans in Texas. Uh, and uh, on top of that, also, uh, do keep in mind the Ukrainian Red Cross is raising funds for relief to help those that have been impacted by the war in Ukraine due to Russian invasions. So do, do please go check out the Ukrainian Red Cross. Go give some money um, to help fund uh, humanitarian efforts and not war efforts in the region to help citizens that are impacted by that. As well, we recently, one of our team members here, uh, Zeke, Nelson's, our community manager, uh, has fallen upon hard times, but they have uh, found a home, and they are moved in, and they are getting all things accustomed, but as you know, moving expenses are very expensive, and they can always use a little bit of a hand. This is a mutual aid request. Mutual aid is great because mutual aid is a way for you to give money to those in need, and you know that it is directly impacting their lives, as opposed to do donating to a, a, a charitable organization or a fundraiser. While those are great, it is always heartwarming and affirming for me to see that somebody is being impacted. Zoe has dropped the link right there, uh, so go ahead, send some funds, help Z out help out a fellow gamer help out a fellow AG, uh, a member of the lgbtqia plus community uh and help out our community manager and friend zeke all right we are starting off in video game news zoe do you have anything for us to start off with today yeah i got some video game news for you i got a lot of stuff here let's start off with uh something small that i was super excited to hear that there isn't a lot to go on just yet, it's a nice little teaser, but there was a uh, trademark listing. Uh, Behavior made a trademark recently, as reported by Tech Raptor, for a game called Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating sim. Uh, there are no details beyond that, but they have definitely trademarked it. Um, by all accounts, it seems to be a game that is definitely happening, and I am very excited for it. Please let me... Play a game where I can date Legion and Crow Mommy. Thank you. That's all I've ever really wanted. Legion and Crow Mommy. Those are your two choices, eh? Those are my two choices. Uh, I would probably have to say if I was going to date anybody that was not a licensed member of the Dead by Daylight roster, just to make it a little bit easier but more complicated on myself, I would mm -hmm. have to say my two choices would be Huntress, 
uh, and the Trickster. Uh, but that is no surprise, no surprise at all. Uh, I see okay. that the trademark was filed as soon as 16th of February, 2022. Mm-hmm. It's just happened very recently. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, 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 on top of a dating sim in the Dead by Daylight universe, uh, do, do, would you have expected that to be the natural progression from, like, we're making a... Uh, unbalanced, or not, un- you know, like an uh, like an unbalanced PvP game where it's four versus one. Uh, would you think that, like the next leap for them to make a game would be a dating sim for this IP? You know, when I first heard about it, also uh, just so you know, people in the chat are saying the picture is freezing intermittently. It seems to be back right now, but they're still consistently hearing us. Okay, got it. Perfect. Uh, perfect but you perfect. say you know the picture intermittently. Uh, but anyway. Back when I first heard about Dead by Daylight, ooh, Dead by Daylight, and back when I first started playing it, I would not have expected that at all. But let me tell you, since I started getting back into it and the people I play with, it is not surprising at all anymore. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, people occasionally treat it like it is a dating sim anyway at this point, so it really only makes sense now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I uh, I would have expected like a third person survival horror game. Um, I would have expected maybe like a first person walking simulator horror game. Um, but no, no, no. Uh, I know the people that play in our Discord server. I know the people that I watch pl- like live stream the game on Twitch. I no longer play the game. Uh, I decided that I needed to find a different higher power in my life. Uh, first in my life was Jesus Christ, then was Satan, then was Dead by Daylight, and now I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm taking in requests. So if anybody has, you know, shopping around a new higher power, always looking for it. Currently, Elden Ring's fi- fi- filling that void in my life. But no, I, I hooked on you a dating sim uh, from Dead by Daylight. Fantastic. Well, on a complete 180 from that, uh, Gran Turismo 7. Uh, is going to be uh, is 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 going to be hitting the PlayStation Five here soon. Gran Turismo, the flagship racing title for the PlayStation consoles, all the way back from the PSX, uh, way back in the late '90s, um, is hitting shelves again. Since and this is the first time they've had a flagship mainline title hit shelves since Gran Turismo Six. It has been absolutely years uh, since we've had that happen. Um, but now they made uh, leaks towards this in 2017, and it is finally off the ground, ready to hit shelves. And I will tell you, as somebody that is a fan of racing games, I am actually excited. Um, I uh, have uh, always had a special place in my heart for Gran Turismo because it is more of a racing simulator um, where you kind of own a team, own a garage. Uh, and Gran Turismo 7 uh, seems to be... Um, the newest uh the newest uh, upgrade of that where it is a whole town that you will be essentially uh, participating in different things with including not only a garage a racetrack a museum a bank legislature and a carnival for games but a cafe where you can interact with fellow racers uh it seems that they are trying to bring car culture uh to, to revamp car culture the game looks absolutely stunning uh, it renders in a full uh, in full 4K. Uh, it hits over 60 frames per second. Uh, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to play it, um, uh, especially when Forza Horizon hit that itch. Uh, so tell me, Zoe, are you a big fan of racing games or Gran Turismo at all? You know, I am not really a big fan of racing games, but the way you're describing this really makes me want to play it. Uh, I not crazy about a lot of games where you just kind of do the same thing over and over again which is why racing games have never really been a thing for me it's why like fighting games are tricky for me to get into unless it's a very recognizable property like uh smash brothers obviously or dragon ball z kai um but all of that extra stuff that you described like the town the cafe the the legislature just like framing the racing game around what it sounds like is almost like a town maintenance simulator in a weird way maybe not quite that but it's it's it feels like it's starting to approach some vaguely stardew valley vibes that i'm here for um i will probably check it out 
Uh, I'll probably see what it's like when people when it comes out and people are playing it on Twitch before I spend money on it, but I'm definitely interested. Uh, I have a question for you as a fan of racing games. I looked up Gran Turismo 6, and that came out in 2013. So yeah. you've been waiting nine years for this game? Nine years for this game, that is correct, yes. Uh, Dang. Because uh, uh, the last... The last Gran Turismo game that they released that was not a uh, was not a mainline game. Uh, that was uh, it was its own kind of little. I it was it was Gran Turismo in spirit, but I guess they tried mm -hmm. to, to take on the Forza model a little bit. Um, it was not very good. Uh, there was okay. it was rife with um, just loot boxes and pay to win sort of things. Uh, it had its own economy. It was a games as a service game. Uh, and I uh, and it was free to play, and I picked it up, and I immediately uh, deleted it after three races. Uh, so I'm very excited to get back to Gran Turismo. Um, it is no surprise that cars are very important to me. Uh, my father uh, is a hobbyist uh, road racer. Uh, he's held multiple medals and trophies in Road Atlanta, Barber Motorsports Park, um, and not only stock car, but also road racing. Uh, he taught me how to work on cars. I am a big fan of the Fast and the Furious franchise. I believe that that is a better and more consistent franchise than Star Wars. Get in the comments, you fucking goons. Uh, You're going to uh, get us canceled. I'm going to get so canceled immediately. Nobody's going to watch remember, the show. Remember that show, Carrying Comfort News, that had one episode that lasted 15 minutes before the Star Wars fans came for us? Uh, they just, they just, like... Dog piled. Thank you for the 420 <laughs> bits. Nice, 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 Martin Games. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Gran Turismo, uh, I remember I was a wee lad sitting on the floor of my living room carpet. Uh, my dad, uh, when I was still living with my parents, uh, my dad had his big TV where he'd be watching wrestling or, you know, his shows and things of that nature. And I would sit and I'd have my own TV and I'd be playing video games, Metal Gear Solid. Um, Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat game that came out on PlayStation that was not very good. Uh, Gran Turismo, um, Final Fantasy VIII, all of these games were a part of my childhood, and Gran Turismo has been very, 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 um, uh, very, very instrumental in my uh, in my upbringing. When I didn't have Gran Turismo, I had Midnight Club, specifically Midnight Club Three Dub Edition. I think that is one of the greatest racing games ever known. Uh, uh, and uh, Forza, as of recently, has kind of filled that hole in my heart. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to get back to Gran Turismo. Uh, just to answer oh, yeah. a question, we've got Martlet Games. Favorite Fast and Furious movie? Do you have a favorite Fast and Furious movie, Zoe? I have never seen a Fast and Furious movie. Holy shit. Well, guess what? I think we're going to have to do... Uh, so so I'm, I'm going to give a little breaking news. That is from the uh, the Patreon, the Comfort Club desk here. Uh, so we are planning. Uh, here's a little bit of news for everybody, but we have already told our Patreon way back in the gap uh, that we are going to be doing a Twilight watch along, all the Twilight movies. Uh, it's going to be me and Leslie and I believe one other person, but we're going to kind of watch them along, uh, record the commentary for it, kind of put up on a Rift Tracks thing. And I think we should do the same thing with the Fast and the Furious saga with you. Uh, what, do, what, what do you think? What do I'm you into think? that. Hell yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. I've been wanting to get into them because now all my friends are into them. <laughs> there you go. There you go. By titles alone, what do you think would be your favorite? Because you have Fast, the Fast and the Furious, then you have Too Fast, Too Furious, you have Tokyo Drift, you have uh, you have Fast and Furious. Uh, well, you have the Fast and the Furious. It was the four. You've got uh, you've got uh, Fast Five. Then you've got Fast Six, Furious Seven. The Fate of the Furious, which is eight. They had The Fate of the Furious, which is eight. Uh, and then you have Hobbs and Shaw, which is a Fast and the Furious saga movie. And then you've got F9, um, which, you know, they had it named after a tornado. What do you think out of all those would be your favorite? I really love that the fourth one is just called Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast <laughs> and, and there's, Furious. There's yep. no effort to differentiate it from no. anything else. It's very funny to me. Um, I'll... You know what? I'm gonna be honest. I'm looking at a list right now, and I'm a really sucker. I'm, I'm a sucker for really unnecessarily long names. Okay. And while this 
is apparently a short film. The turbocharged prelude for Too Fast, Too Furious is very funny to me. Oh my goodness, you're getting into the deep Fast and the Furious lore. You're getting into the short film that was made as a prequel that was a DVD extra that was, it was released on a website and then it was a DVD extra on Too Fast, Too Furious and it was a prequel. It was kind of letting you know what had happened to Brian O'Connor since uh since the first movie holy hell okay i can't wait to watch this series with you zoe um if, if you would like to see this happen if you would like to make this happen uh then go ahead and hop into our patreon join the comfort club we've got uh, a private discord uh, uh uh area where you can hang out uh we can we we run games uh and you also get to watch uh aew pay-per-views with us for free and you're going to get special stuff for free you get session zeros early you get to name npcs in our actual play stream so go ahead and check that out all right do you have anything else in video game news for us zoe yeah i got some big uh late and breaking news uh that i think most people have heard already but we should still talk about is pokemon scarlet and violet uh was announced recently during a nintendo direct i believe and they showed the three uh starters uh hmm sprigatito Sprigatito. It's probably how you pronounce that. Fuecoco and Quaxley. Sprigatito, um, Fuecoco, and, 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 and oh my goodness. Okay, here. Yeah, Quaxley. Yeah, I realized, I realized as I was saying it that I've never spoken these names out loud yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure how to pronounce them. The, the, but... way, the way you said that made me think of, um, it made me think of an ABBA song. Uh, let me bring them up here. <laughs> Look at them. Look at these idiots. Look at them. They're, They're like... so cute. Look, everyone everyone is giving uh, Fuecoco, the fire starter, a lot of shit. I think he looks like a happy little chili pepper. I'm willing to bet his final evolution is badass. Uh, and everyone's going to regret the shit they've been talking about, my boy Fuecoco. <laughs> okay, so... so... <laughs> Uh, Sprigatito, <laughs> Sprigatito better stay on all fours. Uh, Sprigatito <laughs> is the, uh, I'm assuming, is the weed cat. Uh, Sprigatito is the weed cat, yes. Okay. Uh, right there, and I can tell that that uh, the fir front two paws are elevated more than the back two paws, which is something that I've seen been discussed in the Discord server that has caused some discourse. Um, oh, they sure are the fans. Um, and then <laughs> you said it was a Quackerino is the Quack name of Quaxley. 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 Here, I'll type it in the in the Twitch chat. Quaxley, the dapper Quaxley, the dapper water duck. It is just Donald Duck. That is just Donald Duck as a Pokemon. That is just baby. I Donald will hear Duck, yeah. no arguments about it. I've been seeing on Twitter that um that the uh final evolution of Quaxley um uh is going to be a sexy duck pirate because this new game is take, taking place in a uh in a Espana, Espana pardon me Espana uh coded region uh that's, that's new what to I've the heard. games. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, I cannot wait to get into uh, into our uh, our uh, uh, animal fighting ring simulator, the new game with this. Uh, have you been playing Legend Arceus or Arceus? 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 I Arceus? think it's pronounced Arceus. Arceus I have sense. not. The last the last Pokemon game was one that uh, the last one I played, I should say, is one that came out right before that, which was Sword and Shield on the Switch, which I actually never finished. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon. Sun and Moon, I think, is the one that came out right before that, uh, ignoring the remakes and remasters. Uh, they both felt very repetitive to yeah. me, which Pokemon games in general have like a very significant kind of formula. And it also feels wild to say that because Sun and Moon did break that formula with the trials. Yes. But it didn't... I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It felt very... Once once you did once you did it a few times, it was like, okay, well, this is what we're doing for the whole time. Like, because I've played the remasters as they've, they've come out, because when I was little, I played Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, uh, and then I never played Pokemon again until X and Y came out. Uh, but I've gone back to play the remasters as they come out, and I really enjoy them because, you know, it still follows that formula of going through the gyms and beating the Elite Four, but there's uh -huh. also, like, a lot of other stuff surrounding it that, like, interrupts it and breaks it up. Um, yes. I really... I really loved xy i'm really glad i picked up x and y because that's what got me back into pokemon in general um but sun and moon and sword and shield i just didn't really get that sense of a bigger story happening around it yeah 
at least not not the way i started to get used to makes sense makes sense yeah makes sense uh you and i had an opposite kind of a journey with pokemon i played up until x and y and then i fell off i i got ratioed i took an l i became maidenless and tarnished i fell <laughs> off uh and uh i have not played a pokemon game since i had a switch uh at the beginning of pandemic i played animal crossing and then i immediately downloaded games like my friend pedro uh and all these other third party games because uh at that point i would i was not getting paid well in my job uh, and so I could not afford mainline Nintendo titles because they never go on sale. Uh, they never go on sale uh, for the Switch games, which, you know, that's 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 a different conversation that we should have in the future. Um, yeah. I am I am very, very excited uh, to see uh, to see uh, what comes from these new games. And I might just pick up a Nintendo Switch again because there's a lot of great games coming out for it. Um, that I'm very excited for, Advance Wars Remaster. Uh, I am a big Advance Wars fan. I am very excited for that. I might finally pay through, play through Fire Emblem. I played through half of Fire Emblem, and then I sold my Switch to my little brother uh, because I'm a bad video gamer. Uh, the new Splatoon looks great. I, but, yeah, I'm here for all these. Uh, oh, also, uh, something to show my age uh, that I am a uh, elder millennial. Uh, I'm very excited for Wii Sports. Um, Wii Sports on, uh, or, or Switch Sports, I guess it's called now. I don't know, but, but I get to play Wii Sports on a Switch? Sign me the fuck up. Sign me the fuck up. Immediately. I got so fit due to Wii Sports. I had, like, a four-pack and everything. Uh, I did not have the gutters, but uh, I had a four pack, so it was, it was it was great. So I'm very excited, maybe to to pick up a, a switch and then be able to get into Wii Sports. I've got one more story yeah. for us, and then we are going to move on to our next topic for this evening, um, which is going to be Zoe. What is our next topic after this? <laughs> next topic after this? Yeah, next topic after this. After video game news, uh, it's keep it. Oh, keep, oh, okay, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got okay, you. Okay, okay. All right. uh, so, you can tell Wes is the wrestling person on the show, I'm not me. On the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so last but certainly not least, uh, as reported Friday by uh, by uh, Kotaku, uh, they have released by Dave Smith that uh, that EA is removing Russian teams from FIFA 22 in response to the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, that includes uh, all three uh, all three of the Russian Premier League teams. Locomotive Moscow, Spartak Moscow, and PFC CSKA Moscow. They will be removed. And uh, the internet has had a bevy of responses to that. Uh, FIFA Twitter is uh, incensed right now. I didn't even I didn't even know that FIFA Twitter was a thing before this weekend, and now I know it, and people are absolutely livid with it. Um, what do you think about this, Zoe? What's your kind of first thoughts hearing about this? Uh, first off, it's no surprise to me that there's FIFA Twitter because I've known many, many people who own expensive video game consoles just to buy the new FIFA game. Uh, that's not even an exaggeration. They just buy FIFA. They just play FIFA. I don't understand why they live their lives. They do, but I hope they're happy. Um, <laughs> uh, my initial response is uh, this is I don't know. I don't know the effect it has pulling the Russian teams from FIFA like this. I don't know how like the rights and, and payments work like that i'm not that mm -hmm. deep into uh sport video game lore i'm not that deep into the lore of that yeah. uh my gut reaction is it feels very much like pulling russia vodka that's already been paid for off the shelves and it starts getting into the french wouldn't help us with the iraq war so we're calling french fries freedom fries indeed, um, indeed. it feels like something something to make it look like you're doing something without really doing anything which i could be wrong ea could be uh hold on i actually have their statement right up here yeah. um one of their partners i i read the statement it doesn't sound like they're doing anything to like help the ukraine which i don't know it's ea i'm not i didn't really expect them to it it just it feels like very showy uh virtue signaling Virtue signaling, yeah. that's the word. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. It is It is fitting uh, Im immediately in line with pulling already paid for goods off of shelves. Uh, uh, as a, it, it is literally the bare minimum what you could do for solidarity for people. Um, and, and 
there, I have their statement right here. EA Sports stands in solidarity with the Ukrainian people and like so many voices across the world of football, calls for peace and an end to the invasion of Ukraine. In line with our partners at FIFA and UEFA, EA Sports has initiated processes to remove the Russian national team and all Russian clubs from EA Sports FIFA products, including FIFA 22, FIFA Mobile, and FIFA Online. We're also actively evaluating related changes to other areas of our games. Um, it's at this point where you kind of ask yourself, they have not made a statement of whether or not they are donating any of the money that they have ma that they have made from uh, games as a service business model or uh, loot boxes or things of that nature uh, for their pay to play uh, way model that they have implemented in FIFA 22 uh, to any Ukrainian Ukrainian relief funds. Um, they haven't further given any notice if they are going to be removing Russian players from teams. Um, which is something that people have been kind of talking about with, NA with EA doing with NHL, uh, if they have the latest NHL title, um, as well as their other game lines, uh, even if it goes down to maybe 2K doing this with NBA because so there's some Russian players in the, in the league. Um, and, it, and it seems like you are punishing, you are actively trying to see like you're doing something and you're punishing the wrong group for it. Uh, it is not, I, I, this is a hot take here, everybody, but I'm going to tell you right now, those three teams from the Russia Premier Soccer League did not invade Ukraine. Uh, it was the Russian army that was headed up by Vladimir Putin. Um, so yeah, I, I, I feel like this is just, uh, another just kind of, uh, we can do the bare minimum and we're on the right side of hi history with this. It's very performative. Um, yes, completely agreed. There's uh, also, uh, there is the... Spicy take that there is absolutely no substantial evidence for, but considering that the Russia teams were banned by FIFA and UEFA, mm -hmm. um, it's almost... Again, it's a spicy take. There's nothing to back it up, but part of me wonders if they had to because of that, and they're just using this as an opportunity to build clout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, completely. Uh, we see the same thing. Uh, I like to watch Formula One racing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I also recognize how damaging Formula One uh, is to not only the planet, but also to different areas across the United States. Uh, if you want to see my full opinions on that, then you can go ahead and watch the latest season of the Alpha Saga, uh, Mezzanine Alpha, our Lancer uh, game, actual play that we have, uh, where I bring my own version of Formula Racing into a cyberpunk world with mech fights. Uh, and I have a lot of opinions on this. Uh, but recently, uh, Formula One has announced that uh, on top of... Um, them severing all connections with different Ru Russian uh, uh, gas companies uh, on top of uh, they are not going to be doing a Russian Grand Prix. Uh, and uh, they're also the Haas Racing Team, uh, which is an American-owned racing team uh, for F1, the Haas F1 team, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, owned by Gene Haas. Uh, they have recently cut ties with Nikita Mazepan, uh, who is Maz Mazepan, who is like, one of their racers he is not a good racer he is actually one of the worst racers in formula one um but his father is an oligarch uh that it was the head of a uh the, the major one of the biggest gasoline companies uh fossil fuel companies in russia uh and so it it, it seems there's a lot going on here and, and it's not going to stop and i think we're going to be seeing this more and more uh from um different companies i would not be surprised if we saw steam making announcement that they are pulling certain games from russian based video game developers off at some point um uh though they won't do things about other games that are very uh don't need to be on that site at all uh but you know they um they they will probably pull games like chernobylite and and i don't know we could see stalker being pulled off as well um, and then some of those other games are made in Ukraine and Poland, but, um, but you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, I'm not a FIFA fan, but uh, I think it's a shame. I think you're, you're putting the wrong attention to certain things. That's just me though. All right. Uh, moving on. We have keep it kayfabe. This is our wrestling section, professional wrestling section here. Keep it kayfabe. Uh, so we have a couple of, uh, big, uh, breaking news is that uh, breaking news uh, that has developed in the wrestling world here today is AEW Revolution 2022 pay per view. AEW is all elite wrestling owned by Tony Khan, stationed out of Jacksonville, Florida, and in Orlando this weekend they have their big 
big pay-per-view card. Uh, card. Um, we have made predictions in the Discord. If you are a member of our Patreon Comfort Club, you can come watch it with us tonight. Uh, and we also have a giveaway of these two different Dungeon Craft packs from 1985 Games. 1985 Games is one of our sponsors. Go check them out. If you want to pick up your own dungeon tiles, battle mats, uh, miniatures, and more, use code COMFORT to get 10% off. Um, but the card for tonight, we have the buy-in card, which is Taz's son, Hook, versus Kate QT Marshall. We've got Layla Hirsch versus Chris Statlander, and just added uh, this past weekend, the House of Black, which includes Malachi Black, Brody King, and uh, Buddy Matthews versus Death Triangle, which is Pac and Pinto Oscuro, and the newly debuted Eric Redbeard, wrestler formerly known as Eric Rowan, who was in a tag team with the Bludgeon Brothers, with the late Brody Lee. I know that's a lot of names that I just uh, hurled at you. If you're a wrestling fan, you understand, though. And uh, the, the main card that we have, we have the AH, AHFO, which is Andrade El Idolo, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy versus Darby Allen, Sting, and Sammy Guevara in a six-man tornado tag match. Now, when you hear the word tornado tag match, Zoe, what, what comes to mind? What do you think that is? Tornado tag match? Yeah. Uh, well, I know what tag team matches are. That's when you have a team member and you tag them in. You're I know that much. Killing I'm killing it. I'm killing it. I know all about wrestling. Don't even worry about it. Tornado tag team match. I'm going to guess that that is just uh, a bunch of people able to tag in. Like more than two people. Like five to seven people on a team just tagging in and out. So interesting enough, you can have as many competitors in a tag match and it's still a ta standard tag match a tornado tag match is you don't have to tag in oh wild okay okay yeah. okay okay so this is going to be a six man free for all with two dividing lines of three on three it is going to be absolutely wild because you have high flyers such as darby allen isaiah cassidy and sammy guevara you have legend sting and matt hardy involved which uh, i always worry when those two go into the ring because they are very old and i think they might die um and then you have uh the uh, imposing and powerful andrade el idolo involved there's a lot of storyline ties up with that i'm excited to see that match next we have john moxley versus brian danielson within the storylines with John Moxley and Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson wants to form an alliance with John Moxley and recruit young wrestlers and to put them through the Dragon Dojo. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You're getting Cobra Kai live on your wrestling television programs right now. But John Moxley has told Brian Danielson that um, he will only think about joining forces with him if he gets into a match with him. And he bleeds with him. So this is going to be a particularly brutal and bloody match. I'm sure that we're sure to see. My predictions for that, uh, the AHFO and uh, the six-man tornado tag match, it's going to be Darby Allen Sting and Sammy Guevara winning. Um, Andrade El Idolo, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy barely win. I think that is a wash. Uh, John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. I think it is going to be... Uh, a knockdown drag out slobber knocker and it's going to come down to uh, last man standing Brian Danielson is going to win somehow I think and I think that John Moxley is going to give him respect and they're going to take in young talent like Lee Moriarty Daniel Garcia uh, and, and others and they're going to turn them into the Cobra Kai of professional wrestling where they fight bullies by bullying them um, I think that's the message that I got from Cobra Kai did you ever watch Cobra Kai Zoe? No, I have watched Cobra Kai. Well, that's not true. I've watched a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of episodes here and there. Um, but hmm, Episodes is the wrong word. Clips. I've watched interesting clips that people have shared with me. It seems like a fun, kind of odd show from yeah. what I've seen. Uh, one day. One day I'll go back and watch it. You know, I have I have a very long backlog of things to watch. I haven't even watched Book of Boba Fett yet. I watched every single episode of Cobra Kai, and I still don't know what's going on with it. My brain is like a sieve when it comes to television shows like that. Coming up next on the card, we have Jade Cargill versus Ty Conti for the AEW TBS Championship. This is a standard one-fall match. Two women enter. Only one woman can leave champion. My money is on Jade Cargill. She is 28-0 uh, and zero in what I believe. 
undefeated right now. She is a domineering force. She is being built as the next big superstar for AEW. Ty Conti is a fantastic wrestler. Uh, she is from Brazil. She has a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and a black belt in judo. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, and she's growing and growing, but I don't think she's got what it takes to go against that bitch. And I'm not just saying that bitch as a derogatory term. Jade Cargill calls herself that bitch because she is the champion of TBS, that bitch show. Um, those are her words, not mine. You cannot cancel me for that. Uh, up next, we have Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. If Eddie Kingston wasn't in this match, I wouldn't care for it. It is not a uh, surprise. I do not care for Chris Jericho. The man is a allegedly an anti-vaxxer, an anti-masker, and allegedly supported the January 6th riot at, at the Capitol. Um, and Eddie Kingston is a darling mental health advocate, a true fan of wrestling, and is absolutely going to destroy that old Canadian man in the ring. After that, we have a three-way tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Jurassic Express, which is Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Damn, I love those two. Versus Red Dragon, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, who just recently debuted in AEW. Versus the Young Bucks, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson. The Jurassic Express are the champions. They're holding the belt, and they're coming off of just winning it from the Lucha Brothers in a match where Ray Phoenix, one of the Lucha Brothers, um, uh, did not break his arm but uh, essentially uh, just popped his elbow out of socket was kind of what they said. Uh, it was a tear. It was a bad fracture. Uh, but uh, he is apparently feeling better, and he's coming back soon. But um, I think what we're going to see with that is we're going to see uh, Red Dragon. Because with these three-way tag matches, you don't have to tag the champions. You just have you, you don't have to pin the champions. You can just pin somebody else, and you win. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Red Dragon is going to uh, cheat and is going to take the titles off of them, and they are going to be our new tag team champions. Building up a storyline that we have working between the, the stables, the elite, as well as the Bullet Club. Keith Lee versus Orange Cassidy versus Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks versus Wardlow versus Christian Cage for the Face of the Revolution ladder match. Uh, that is going to be big, big, big. Until uh, Ricky Starks got involved, it was three really big men in the fact that we had Keith Lee, Powerhouse Hobbs, and, uh, War and Wardlow. And I thought we were going to have all big men in this match. And I kind of hope we had all big men in the ladder match. Because just like Big E from WWE, I love seeing big, meaty men slapping meat and uh especially when ladders are involved uh with that i think that we are going to be seeing at first i thought maybe it would be interesting to see powerhouse hobbs walk away with that but i think storyline is ricky starks is going to win it by sacrificing powerhouse hobbs further demand uh, uh demantling team taz and uh and seeing them as not an efficient stable next we have a match that i'm very excited for dr Britt baker dmd versus thunder rosa it is a singles match for the aew women's championship and i have some news for that earlier this week there was reports that thunder rosa had been injured at, La at rampage this past uh last week and would not be able to uh compete uh, or not, uh, not Rampage Dynamite, and would not be able to compete due to injury. Or she was still going to compete, but she was going to be injured, which did not smell good news. There was rumors circulating, but Tony Khan, Thunder Rosa, Dr. Sampson, uh, there's actually Doc Sampson, Dr. Sampson, that is the healthcare professional that uh, works for AEW, um, had all assured everyone that Thunder Rosa is in tip-top shape. Thunder Rosa has told uh, her friend, fans multiple times in interviews, uh, going live on uh, Instagram and other uh, and other sources, that she would not wrestle if she was not feeling 100%. And how I see that going is Thunder Rosa finally championing against Dr. Britt Baker, and I can stop being bored with the women's champion. I like Dr. Britt Baker. I just think that she's better when she's chasing after the championship as opposed to when she's holding the championship. And that's true for a lot of champions out there. I felt the same about Bret Hart. I was not a big fan of Bret Hart when he held the belt. I always liked him chasing after the belt. It felt more dynamic, more real. I always liked the chase. What about you, Zoe? Do you, do you like the chase? Oh, I like the chase. Perfect, perfect. That's <laughs> all I need to hear. Uh, I get we, what you mean, though. We have two more matches after that. We have a brutal, devastating CM Punk, best in the world, versus... MJF and a dog collar match. Now, Zoe, what do you think a dog collar match is? You know, Les, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is what a as to what a dog collar match is probably is not what a dog collar match is. 
<laughs> well, if you're not going to answer that question, I don't blame you. I'm going to tell you. What it is is you take two contestants, you put them in the middle of the ring, and as we have seen in the storyline, every time CM Punk tries to fight MJF or face him, MJF runs away like a coward and cheats and lies and steals to get what he wants. And now... He has requested a dog collar match, and a dog collar match shall happen. What you do is you take two contestants, you put them in the middle of the ring, then you take two leather collars that are attached by a steel chain that cannot be broken, and you put them around each of the contestants' neck. And so they have to fight each other. They can utilize the chain like a weapon. They can choke each other with it. They can hit each other with it. They can uh, do the Macarena with it. They can do whatever they want with this chain and collar match. Yes, I see that look on your face, and I realize... Exactly what I thought a dog collar match was, and I was like, no, that can't possibly be it. It can't possibly be it, but that is exactly what it is. Uh, there's a lot of connotations going on with that. It is sure to be brutal. It is sure to be bloody. And the payoff for one of the greatest, I say, greatest feuds that has happened in AEW history in a long time since uh since Adam Page versus Kenny Omega I think we are going to see a payoff for it tonight which brings us to the main event Hangman Adam Page versus Adam Cole a singles match for the AEW World Championship I think Adam Page the cowboy um, the, the, uh, the hangman hanger is going to take it all the way, but it is going to be a very impressive match between the two Adams. Uh, we are going to see who the real Adam truly is. If he does lose tonight, it will be involved with some run-ins from red dragon or the elite. Uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. It is going to be heart wrenching. I cannot wait to watch it. Uh, so yeah, AEW revolution. It looks like it is going to be an impressive card and i cannot wait to watch it we have some other news before we move on to our next segment with ttrpg's uh ttrpg news but we have a bunch of ton of notes that are coming direct from fightful select at sean ross sap on Twitter. Uh, there has been a company meeting on Saturday for a huge portion of the talent in AEW. Many people not booked for Sunday were still around to attend it. There was big news recently announced with the purchase and the acquisition of ROH, which is Ring of Honor by AEW, and I, I, I'm believing that there is going to be a lot of consolidation, and maybe even... Uh, not just consolidation, but we might be seeing an ROH show on TBS or TNT soon. I'm very excited. Uh, there is a wrestler by the name of Swerve Scott. Swerve Scott was formerly um, uh, a, uh, a WWE wrestler on NXT. Very, very fantastic wrestler. He's been doing the rounds in the indie scene, and he has been noted that he is he lives in Orlando, but he's been hanging around uh, AEW people this week. He was at a concert that AEW was hosting uh, for a different uh, for Mikey Ruckus and some other uh, music artists um, that was. In honor of the um, not just the black wrestlers that wrestle in the uh, in the community, but also the the music that they use, uh, and it, it is uh, it has been a uh, it has been a fantastic time. I have heard and I've seen reported, but apparently he's been hanging around there, and there are rumors, and uh, it has all been but confirmed that he has signed with AEW, and we should be seeing him debut. If not tonight, we will see him debut this upcoming week on Dynamite. We are also told to express, expect more story progression to launch the Hardy Boys in AEW. Uh, so that is AEW news. Keep it kayfabe. With GCW news, there is not a lot, but they have Game Changer Wrestling. They have more events coming up right now. Be sure to check out Fight TV GCW. Um, we are seeing an exquisite match come up on the horizon between Minoru Suzuki and one of my personal favorites, my role model, Effie. Uh, one of the most gay, flamboyant wrestlers I have ever seen in my life and is an inspiration. I have his hot sauce right here on my desk, right beside me. Effie's wrath. Um, but, is that what uh, you were taking hot shot, uh, shots of? That's what I was taking shots of last night when, uh, when yeah. we were getting tipped during the interview. Uh, it is very tasty. It is also uh, very spicy. Spicy. Um, but on top of that, we also have Effie's Big Gay Brunch that is happening in Dallas, Texas. And you might be asking, why is Effie's Big Gay Brunch happening in Dallas, Texas, where there's a lot of legislation that is anti-LGBTQ, especially anti-trans legislation going on? Well, they are doing what they can right now to help take uh, to fight against this legislation and to raise money 
for not only Tent, but multiple other organizations. So please, please, please do check out Effie's Big Gay Brunch. I'm trying to pull up the uh, the information here. Upcoming streams. Uh, they have next week GCW Astronaut as well. Next Sunday they have Big Gay Brunch. So do please go check it out. It is sure to be a fantastic time and that is all i have for keep it kayfabe thank you for sticking with us and please do come out and watch aw revolution with us and the patreon comfort club it is only five dollars to join and you are doing not only yourself a service to hang out with such a wonderful group of individuals but you are also providing us with financial backing to provide you this great news and more great content zoe i have talked for a long time what do you have yeah. for us for on ttrpg news yeah some great TTRPGs new oh TTRPG news for you. Uh, first thing up is a couple things that are near and dear to my heart. A couple properties that I'm very excited to see getting uh, either a their first uh, adaptation into the TTRPG space or b uh, something that might breathe fresh life into them. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who, or I used to love Doctor Who. I have watched it that much recently because life gets busy uh but from 2010 to 2020 uh it was doctor who all day all day long baby um doc uh, cubicle seven uh yes cubicle seven is the company that has put out the original doctor who rpg uh it is a unique system uh catered specifically to that property uh, however, Cubicle 7 has announced in the last couple of weeks that they are putting out a new Doctor Who RPG game called Doctors and Daleks, a.k.a. D&D. &D. Yes, it is a 5th edition version of the Doctor Who property for the TTRPG space. Uh, this is not the first time Cubicle 7 has done this with one of their properties. They've also done it with Lord of the Rings, releasing two different game systems for that property. Uh, Cubicle 7 released... Uh, I believe it's called The One Ring, which was a unique game system as well for the Lord of the Rings setting. And then they also released uh, what is more well-known, of course, Adventures in Middle-Earth, uh, which uses the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule. Um, uh, Free League Publishing then purchased the uh, the licensing rights for The One Ring, and they put out One ah. Ring 2E, uh, which is you yes. can go purchase, this, purchase it now. I have it on my shelf over here. It is a fantastic system, and uh, stay tuned for new, new, more news from us about that. Oh, spicy. Spicy little preview. Uh, I am very excited for this, and also... Uh, Selfishly disappointed in the way that I am any time that something I think deserves more attention than it's getting uh, gets kind of pushed to the side like this. Uh, I think the original Doctor Who TTRPG is very good and very valid. Um, they are still making a second edition version of that, so it's not canceled completely. Mm -hmm. um, and I am taking the stance that I hope that this fifth edition adaptation of Doctor Who, um, A, gets more people into role-playing games as Dungeons & Dragons often does, even as someone who would always love for people to play different games. Dungeons & Dragons is what got me started, so I can't complain too much. Um, and hopefully it expands people's horizons into the other Doctor Who TTRPG stuff and goes on from there. Um, it's a good it's a good starting point. It's a good jumping off point. I'll never argue against that. Um, in addition to that, I also have another uh, property that I really enjoy getting a TTRPG adaptation, The Dragon Prince from Netflix. Uh, it's been a couple years since that show released any episodes, but it is not canceled, uh, much to my surprise when I found this news. Uh, but they are using the Cortex system, which I have never played. Uh, but I've heard that people enjoy. Um, so I'm very excited to check that out. That is coming out uh, March 29th, believe it or not. That is very soon. Um, it's even available for pre-order now. It's going to be called Tales of Zadia. Uh, I am very excited. I really like The Dragon Prince. I thought it was a really good show. Um, I think it still is a good show. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Um, I didn't see many details. I haven't been able to find many details about it yet, which... Is surprising considering it's coming out at the end of the month uh so hopefully some more stuff about it comes out uh but i'm really interested to see what they do with that 
Uh, yes, the Cortex role-playing system game. I think it was from 2004. Margaret Weiss, one of the writers of the Dragonlance, started the Cortex system. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. And they started with uh, the Serenity role-playing game, the Battlestar Galactica role-playing game, and the Supernatural role-playing game that all came out ah. in 2004. Uh, but I think it was like around uh, 2009 where Cam Banks took over and Cortex, they, they used Cortex Plus, which is saw you, where you saw great role-playing systems such as the Smallville role-playing game, the Leverage role-playing game, as well as Marvel Heroic role-playing. And now they have Cortex Prime, uh, which has been releasing a fandom. I believe fandom publishing owns it now. The fandom company owns it now. Uh, on top of the Dragon Prince, which is very exciting. It's a very great show. Um, they are going to also be releasing uh, Legend of Grayskull, the uh, the Masters of the Universe role playing game that I am very very excited for, uh, very excited for myself personally. But yeah, check that out. That sounds great. Uh, and more news with uh, with um, new games coming out. Uh, keepsake game designer uh, Jian Shim has branched out with the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen is uh, one of the latest uh, games to be designed that does not utilize dice, but uh, Jian has actually utilized chess as the mechanic that you use in the Snow Queen. Um, it seems to be very, very original. It is a campaign-based game that is for two players. It is chess-based, uh, and it has raised uh, uh, through... Uh uh, raised uh, three times its initial ask, ask on the pre-order. Uh, and uh, what's actually kind of interesting is Gion as, uh, is raising money uh, for this game, is, is kind of uh, is funding it on her own. She is not utilizing itch.io or, um, or uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo. She's taking pre-orders. She built the website and uh, is doing... Um, all, all of it herself, and, and, and it's great. Uh, and she's doing her own system for it, and it looks really, really, really ex excellent. Looks very, very cool. Go ahead and check out The Snow Queen now. Uh, very, very cool. And moving on into more news before we, uh, we wrap it up with our uh, movie news here, um, we have uh, reported that Modifius Entertainment is taking all of the profits from their Dune and Dishonored role-playing systems and donating those to Ukraine relief charities until today. So, if you want to be able to provide money to Ukrainian relief charities, but you want to get a little bit something out of it, then go ahead and hop over to Modifius Entertainment. Go ahead and pick up their Dune system, uh, or go ahead and pick up the Dishonored system if those are things that interest you and you want to see what their 2D20 system is all about, and all of the profit that they make from those games until today are going to be donated to Ukrainian relief funds. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. Uh, did you know that Khaldun Khalil, our guest last night, was one of the contributing writers for the Dune system? Uh, not just the main core rule book, but also the, the Arrakis supplement book? Oh, wow. Uh, yes, I did know that because I watched a little bit of the interview. That you did, that you did. And you can check out that interview. It is a VOD now, and I am currently editing it so it can go onto YouTube. Not currently, it's... You know what I mean. Uh, except a talented multitasker. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I do what I can. Do you have any more news in the TTRPG field for us, Zoe? Uh, yeah, I have just a, a couple of small things. Uh, first, I want to say just about the Snow Queen. I am a huge sucker for TTRPGs that use unique mechanics like that. Mm -hmm. uh, chess sounds so dope. I love like playing cards, tarot cards, uh, dice stacking games. Um, Jenga. There's a TTRPG out there. I can't remember exactly what it's called right now off the top of my head, but it uses Jenga and as as its uh, mechanic that pushes the story forward. Uh, stuff like that's great. Um, just a very couple small things. Uh, Magpie Games is getting ready to come out with Urban Shadow 2nd Edition. As we all know, a lot of that has been pushed back, but they recently released version 6 of their Quick Start, mm -hmm. uh, which is free to download. Uh, I adore Urban Shadows. Uh, version 6 made a bunch of big changes to some of the playbooks if you are keeping up with the Urban Shadows Quick Start. Uh, so I highly recommend you check that out and see what they've come up with um other than that i don't have any other ttrbg news other than to say uh just as a reminder go to itch.io check out the bundle for uh uh mm, sorry uh tent correct <laughs> ah, remembering names is difficult but you know support trans rights in texas and abroad uh the bundle has a bunch of great games it has really big games that just came out like wonder home and thirsty sword lesbians and smaller games uh like 
When you meet your doppelganger on the road, you must make out with them. And Jonathan Franks wants your attention, and you must not give it to him. Uh, so there <laughs> oh, is truly... Oh, not Jonathan Franks. John... Oh, I'm sorry, Jonathan Franks. Jonathan Franks, oh. Jonathan oh. Franks. <laughs> Jonathan Franks. I was, like, I was like, no, not my Uncle John. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, um... Jonathan Franks. Uh, it's a game about a ghost that wants your attention, and it has taken the form of the actor Jonathan Franks. Uh, the point is, there's big stuff, small stuff. There's, like, supplements for 5th edition and Pathfinder 2nd edition. There's a bunch of good stuff in there. So you are getting a lot for your buck, and it all goes to a very, very, very worthy cause. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And and and, and before we move on to, to our movie news, our, uh, our editor-in-chief here, uh, Wally, has passed us along some news here. What is this breaking news? What is this, Wally? You're very quiet. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for the info. Um, right now on worldofdarkness.com, you can pick up the uh, preview for Hunter the Reckoning 5th Edition. Uh, Hunter the Reckoning 5th Edition was announced through their website on uh, October 26, 2021, and they have been steadily making progress on it. I remember when they dropped it, I was very enthused. The artwork that was shown in it was very, very cool. It seems to have this black and white but orange motif in it uh kind of like the sin city style but with the frank miller used red uh, they're using orange in this very very impressed uh i love hunter i'm more of a hunter the vigil fan than hunter the reckoning but this is very very cool um there's a lot that i want to see in that uh but uh they just released yesterday uh the hunter the reckoning fifth edition preview i took a look at it it was 10 pages of it and what you can see in it is uh is a call to action introduction it talks about what hunter the reckoning is about and who are the hunters inquisitive creed with his personality tactics dangers and archetypes it's an example creed for those that want to play as a knowledge seeking occult savvy and curious hunters the beast whisperer edge and perks and la salestina the bloody mannequin which is an example of an antagonist you can use in your hunter chronicles what hunter the reckoning is is you play monster hunters but not just vampire hunters werewolf hunters any kind of hunter under the board that that is creepy that is that is preying on humanity or mortals uh and uh it it, it, it i'm very excited for this to come out but i will say there is something that is a big bummer and for me it is the book cover that they have shown off because they showcase the cover for this book uh and the cover for this book i'm going to go ahead and bring it up here uh to to showcase to everybody here uh, and this is, I want to once again let you know that this is not me coming as uh, somebody that's mocking somebody's work, but this is me critiquing somebody's work. And here is the book cover that we have for Hunter the Reckoning. Um, you can see the orange motif is being involved. Zoe, when you see this book cover, what, do you, what does it make you see? What, what does it make you think of? Oh boy. Uh, yeah, you showed me this cover earlier. It is, um, it's very confusing to look at. Uh, it feels like there's a lot going on and not a lot going on at the same time. Um, there is, I told you earlier, where the sun is coming through. As you pointed out, the sun is not even in the right position, but it also looks like the person in a beanie is holding up a flashlight, a very bizarre looking flashlight for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's like... I mean, it's what everyone's saying on Twitter, but I'm going to say it too. It looks like a cheap Ghost Hunter show. Yeah. And I know Chaotic Lucian is saying right now, maybe it's not final, maybe it's just the preview cover. Uh, but on their website, on the on the official World of Darkness website, they said that it is a preview of the official cover of Hunter the Reckoning 5th Edition. Um, and I have to take that at face value. Um and this is not to say that I, I don't know who's taken this shot, who edited it, and things of that nature. There are things that I like about it. I like the logo. I, I you know, I like how it is very limited. It, World of Darkness logo, and then you've got the the little symbol up here that's for Fifth Edition, and then it, it's just the the preview. But there's a, it's very disjointed, and it feels. It just feels very messy to have a cover like this when you have art in the book that looks like that. 
That is done by Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly is a Scottish uh, photographer and digital artist that has done a lot of work for the World of Darkness. Not just when it was with Paradox, but when it was with White Wolf. He has done work for uh, for not only them, but also uh, Onyx Path Publishing. His work is all over the World of Darkness. And when I see his work, I think that that is the peak aesthetic style. And this looks good to me. It has... It has a foreground, a background, it has a color motif, it conveys the, the aesthetic that you're going for. I think it looks good, but then when I see this cover here, that feels disjointed. That doesn't feel like, that feels like this is a band photo for an emo or punk pop punk band or a goth band. Like, it feels like this is a promotional photo on a tour poster. Um, and I don't, and I like go for it, go for it. I like the looks of the people they have there, like the the models uh, who are part of the photo shoot. I yeah. think they look cool themselves. I think that, but yeah, like like you said, it's nothing like against them or the or the people who worked on it. Um, it is just what you talked about the the coloring and the and the positioning. It all is very kind of messy. But I think they could do something good with the people they have still. Yeah, and that's the thing is that's the thing is to say I don't think this is a bad photo. I think this is a bad cover photo. I think this is a bad book cover photo. But seeing this in the book, this fits the aesthetic. But it, I, this, I, if I see this on the store, I'm not uh, on, on the bookshelf, and I didn't know what Hunter the Reckoning was, I wouldn't pick it up. I wouldn't pick mm -hmm. it up at all. Uh, I might check the back, and if I see cooler art on it, like I'm seeing right here, the the inner art it has a watercolor based kind of look on it that looks really really cool. Uh, there's more of this digital photography that happens that has that same color palette and that motif. You see La Celestina, uh, the artwork of the Bloody Mannequin, and it looks gnarly. It looks great. It looks, like, amazing. But just that, it's, it's so disjointed and feels unbalanced. Um, and I've and I got to say this again. Like, I don't work for any of these groups and things. I have done freelance work here and there. But, like, I, this just doesn't it, – it doesn't scream to me – come and buy me this is this is not the aesthetic especially with like how their other books look um i hope i hope i hope in my heart uh that they kind of take this and and, and i don't if if anybody ever clips what we're saying about this and shares this with anybody it's gonna get i because the ttrpg community is small and there's people gonna there's people that are gonna go out there and they're gonna say oh ccs is talking shit about your cover we're not talking shit about it we're critiquing it it's kind of what we're doing here on this new show it's kind of what we do uh, i just want to know if anybody from wad sees this uh i everything else that i'm seeing in this preview i'm excited for i like i like the archetypes that you've shared with us i've liked this this antagonist that you've shared with us i just i would like to see I'm going to be paying sixty dollars for this book. I would like for it to look like it is a sixty dollar book. That's just kind of where I'm at with it. I'm probably going to be paying more for this book. You know, I might get a collector's edition if this is the final cover and they don't change the cover. I might shell out for a collector's edition of it. That's like leather bound or something, um, just so that I can have a different cover. Because everything else that I've seen from it has made me very excited, and then that just kind of just kind of took the wind out of my sails just a little bit. And it's a very minor complaint. But, like, when it comes from a marketing standpoint, somebody that's building a brand and you have to have an aesthetic, when we were doing our rebrand and picking a new logo and color palette, I, like, had my – I was hunched over a desk looking at our options multiple times, and I was grueling over what kind of aesthetic we were going to go for. And I, and I, and I, I know how much work that takes, and I just kind of want there to be kind of a, you know, a, a – I don't want to say effort, but just kind of like an understanding from that. Uh, yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, anything else that you want to talk about Hunter the Reckoning, 5th edition? Uh, not for me, no. I agree with pretty much everything you said. I think um, matching the cover's consistency with the rest of the artwork and the rest of the artwork in the book looks sick as fuck. Um, I think part of that may come from the the more subtle uh, i'm not i'm not gonna get into art critique i'm not an artist and that's a mistake that's waters i'm not gonna tread into um but i i do think matching the aesthetic that's inside the book a little bit more will make it more uh, attractive like you said to someone just browsing through a bookshelf without knowing what it is just from the name indeed 
Indeed, indeed. Okay, cool. Well, we are going to, I know there's people here that want to see Smash or Pass Elden Ring NPC Edition, and we are going to get to that, but first we have some movie news from Zoe. Zoe, take it away. Yeah, I got some movie news for you. I got some great gossip from the front lines of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, first, a couple things. Some exciting casting news that has just come onto my Spider-Man-shaped desk. Uh, Finn Wolfhard has joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, he... You gave me a weird look, Wes. I'm not sure what the look was. Uh, is that, his is that role... the Stranger Things kids? That is the Stranger Things kid. That is the Stranger Things kid. He was also in it i believe mm -hmm. was the same kid he um, Tozer. I, beep, beep, beep. yeah he sure did he was also in ghostbusters afterlife which i did not see very good um, movie i will say good, very good movie. i will try to check it out at some point it's again i have a very long backlog uh finn wolfhard's role has not been announced yet neither has the specific property of the marvel Cin cinematic universe he's going to be joining um, there are lots of rumors circulating, as there always are. My favorite one is uh, centered around the fact that Tom Hiddleston has been saying in a lot of interviews, um, not saying, but gently reminding people that he's not going to be playing Loki forever. Um, and given everything that happened with the Loki, Loki TV show and variants, um, obviously the first season of Loki had a kid Loki variant. I think it would be, be very cool if Finn Wolfhard uh, took over the Loki role in a different capacity than what we have been seeing, just to keep it from stale. Hmm, yeah, growing stale, I think is the correct phrase there. Uh, but there's all sorts of things that could be possible. He could be uh, playing a mutant as they introduce the X-Men. Um, he could be a scroll in the Secret of Invasion. Uh, there's all sorts of things Finn Wolfhard could be. I'm excited. I like him as an actor. I am glad he is finding success. There is always that fear when people become very famous, very young, uh, what it might do to them. And that fear was very present, I think, in everyone with the Stranger Things kids. Um, so it's good to see uh, them thriving like that. Um, in other casting news, something a little bit more specific, Anthony Ramos, star of Hamilton and the In the Heights film, has joined the Disney Plus series Ironheart. Uh, that role is also unspecified. Uh, what we know of Ironheart so far, at least, uh, Dominique Thorne is playing uh, Riri Williams, a genius inventor and creator of the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. Uh, the role that Anthony Ramos is playing has not been specified, but... Uh, sources say it will be similar to how Jonathan Majors was introduced as Kang the Conqueror in Loki, where he is expected to not only have a big role in this series, but in future Marvel projects as well. Um, I, uh, similar to Finn Wolfhard, I'm very excited to see Anthony Ramos uh, succeeding. Uh, he is someone that I actually know personally from college, uh, so every time I see his name pop up in articles like this, I'm so so fucking happy for him uh, and it's so cool that he is getting to be part of this big 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 thing in media entertainment um other than casting oh oh uh, there's one more this is less a new casting and more rumors about an old casting coming back as we all know the marvel tv series on netflix were all canceled and flushed down the drain very sad unfortunately mm -hmm. uh but kristen ritter has apparently been spotted with a new hairstyle. And by spotted, I mean her hairstylist posted an Instagram photo of her uh, sporting a new hairstyle with a slight purple tint to it, uh, very similar to how Jessica Jones uh, will occasionally have purple hair in certain iterations of her in the comics. Uh, so rumors are now circulating that Kristen Ritter may be coming back as Jessica Jones. Um, can we spoil Spider-Man No Way Home here? Uh, I think that Spider-Man No Way Home has been out. Uh, we have Doctor Strange is about to come out in a couple of months. I think we can go ahead and spoil it. Go for it. Well, small small spoiler for the first spoiler half hour of Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Cox showed back up as Daredevil, so anything's possible. Uh, mm -hmm. I was very happy to see that. I would love Chris Averter to get to come back as Jessica Jones. Um, I would also like to see, uh, uh, I believe his name was is uh Mike Coulter, Mike Coulter. Yes, Mike Coulter come back as Luke mm -hmm. Cage. Um uh, you know Iron Fist can not come back. That's fine. We don't, we don't need, we don't need, we don't need, we need to talk him. about Iron Fist. Uh but Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, uh they can all come back. I would be very very happy. Uh, those are all good shows and good actors and did very well in their roles there. Other than that, uh, the last bit of Marvel Cinematic Universe news that I have for you is some uh, casting information about Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. 
Uh, oh, no there way. is confirmed cat. There's confirmed casting. There's rumored casting. Uh, some things that have been confirmed through either the trailer or Funko Pop leaks, uh, because that's how we find out who's in MCU movies nowadays. <laughs> uh, variants of Doctor Strange are going to be showing up in the movie Defender Strange, a uh, version of Doctor Strange from the Marvel team Defenders, and Sinister Strange, who, uh, in my opinion, is the same Strange we saw in the uh, Disney Plus series What, what If. if? Yeah. Uh, have both been confirmed through the trailer. Uh, there is also a version of Doctor Strange called Supreme Strange, which is a very clean cut Strange uh, that was seen in a Funko Pop leak. Um, and of course, we also know that a couple characters from the previous movies will be showing back up. Uh, Christine is showing back up from Doctor Strange 1. Uh, Mordo is showing back up, although he may be a variant in this known as Master Mordo. Uh, to be clear, Master Mordo is confirmed as his title whether this is an evolution of baron mordo or a variant uh i don't know it has not been confirmed yet uh but i really enjoyed mordo in the first doctor strange i'm excited to see more of him uh there's also rintra who was seen in the uh recent trailer a green and furry creature who debuted in 1986 as a mystical being from the planet revolve before going on numerous adventures with doctor strange he is the cool uh green minotaur looking dude in the trailers if you see him yep. um of course we have america chavez who i'm super excited to see on the big screen uh gargantos who was the big eyeball monster you see in the trailer uh super cool super cool super cool uh last thing that has been confirmed uh, or at least the last big thing that's been confirmed through a Funko Pop leak uh, is a character named Sarah. Uh, last I checked, there is no confirmed actress for who this character is, um, and there is no confirmed character for who this character is, mm -hmm. uh, but rumors circulate between Sarah Wolf, who was apparently Wong's girlfriend in one of the runs of the comics. Uh, there's also Sarah Crowler, uh, better known as Baroness Mordo and Baron Mordo's mother, uh, which is where I'm leaning towards right now, but who could say? Uh, other than that, more rumors. One, of course, the, the big, 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 big rumor that everyone's talking about is Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Um, I just learned that P uh, Patrick Stewart, the man himself, denied that it was his voice in the trailer. I think he's lying because people lie for these movies. They have to or they get in trouble. Yep. Uh, I am fully convinced that Patrick Stewart is in it in some capacity. Maybe they're throwing us for a loop and it's not going to be Professor X. I would love it if it's Professor X. Who can say, though? Uh, Captain Carter is also rumored to be in the movie. Her shield is seen on the poster for Multiverse of Madness. Um, I would really like that. I like Haley Atwell as an actress. I really loved Agent Carter. I know not many people did. I'm a big Agent Carter stan. Mm -hmm. uh, I was super disappointed when that show was canceled, so I'm always happy to see her get to come back uh, and play that role again. Um, Bruce Campbell is confirmed to be in this movie? But no one knows what role he's going to play. And my favorite, uh, uh, my favorite theory on this is that so back back uh, back before superhero movies uh, became saturated, yes. <laughs> and Sam Raimi was making Spider-Man movies, uh, Bruce Campbell, as we all know, had a cameo in Spider-Man One, Spider-Man Two, Spider-Man Three. Apparently, uh, for Spider-Man Four, Bruce Campbell was supposed to come back and play Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my favorite current theory, since we're dealing with multiverses and variants, is that Bruce Campbell is going to be showing up in this movie as a variant of Mysterio. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Obviously, whatever Bruce Campbell does is always a lot of fun, and I'm just going to be happy to see him on screen, as I always am whenever I see uh, Bruce Campbell. But a uh, Mysterio variant would be super cool. Maybe even a more, uh, like, an actual multiverse travel <laughs> Mysterio, unlike Far From Home, uh, would be very neat. Um other than that, there are other uh, rumors about variants, of course, because we're dealing with the multiverse, so who knows what's who knows who actually is going to show up. Uh, rumors circulate between different Lokis, uh, Mobius from the TV show Loki, Sylvie, uh, Wanda's kids that were in WandaVision, of course, uh, as the Scarlet Witch will be in it, and possibly Scarlet Witch variants. Um, there are rumors that the Inhumans may be brought back, uh, like Black mm -hmm. Bolt. Personally... I don't see it happening because nobody liked that TV show, but maybe this will be a way for them to revitalize it because also people weren't super crazy about the Hulk movies that came out and then they made the Hulk good. So maybe they're going to do it that way by just uh, giving them a role in different people's movies and ingratiating them that way. Um, uh, uh, one more thing, uh, a couple more things. The Super Bowl TV spot for Multiverse of Madness apparently showed what appeared to be a version of Iron Man, uh, which fans are already theorizing to be the evil superior Iron Man. Uh, there is a rumor that 
Tom, Tom Cruise is going to be playing this role, which would be fucking wild. Uh, uh, do you know where that comes from, that rumor about Tom Cruise? No, I sure don't. So Tom Cruise was in the front running to play Tony oh, oh, Stark. Yes, 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 yes. I do know this. I do know this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he yeah, didn't want to wear a helmet. He didn't want to yeah. wear a helmet, and so they, they they moved on to Robert Downey Jr. But the thing about yes. Superior Iron Man is he doesn't wear a helmet; he just wears a headband. So it would it would it would fit into the whole kind of you know that tongue in cheek kind of thing. Meta. Yeah, that would be very funny, and I think very appropriate for what this kind of movie is going to be, especially after all of the meta jokes that were made in No Way Home. With the you know spoilers for No Way Home. Real quick, mute for five seconds if you haven't seen No Way Home and don't want to be spoiled. With all the meta jokes that were made about Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, uh, it seems very appropriate. And now I will stop spoiling No Way Home. Uh, the last rumor that is circulating about Multiverse of Madness casting, and the one that I buy the least, uh, is Deadpool. Oh, yeah. Apparently, Deadpool can be seen in one of the shards on the poster. I looked at it. I looked at the close-up. I don't see it. I That's think people are while and um i also to be quite honest if deadpool's go if deadpool's introduced in the marvel cinematic universe uh it's probably going to happen if the x-men are coming because of the uh, rights and what disney bought etc 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 we don't have to get into it right now mm -hmm. i don't want deadpool's introduction to the marvel cinematic universe to be in doctor strange 2 multiverse of madness yeah i don't yeah. i don't want it i don't want it it seems like a bad idea <laughs> Agreed. Um, so I I don't believe that one, and I also deeply, deeply hope it's not true. But it's out there. Now you know it. Now you know it. Okay, are you a betting lady, Zoe? Yeah. You're betting? Okay. I'll bet. I'll, I'll put a dollar for each of these predictions here. We're going to do three predictions. You got casting predictions, right? We got three casting predictions right now. Okay. Uh, on our table. Finn Wolfhard. You said Kid Loki variant, right? Yes. I will put a dollar on the table that he is not Kid Loki variant, but we have Finn Wolfhard being casted as Nova. Sam Ooh. Alexander, Kid Nova. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep, mm -hmm. the new Nova. I think that that's where that's going to be going. Okay. That's where I personally think it's going to be going. So I will put a dollar, a whole American dollar on the table for that. Next I'm not dollar. Anthony, Ram Anthony Ramos has been casted as a villain for Ironheart which will be a continuing role. I think, and I could be incorrect, but I believe that he might be casted as Firepower. Do you know who Firepower is? I do not know who Firepower is, no. Firepower is a villain of Tony Stark's. It was a rival businessman by the name of Edwin Cord, uh, and uh, he was a minor business rival and a villain until the Armor Wars comic book storyline, which, as we know, they're doing an Armor Wars TV show on Disney+. Plus. So I think it would be pretty interesting to have Anthony Ramos involved with, with you know, Ironheart, and then is going to be having a more full, involved role in Iron Wars. Could probably come on and be into more movies, things of that nature. If it is not Firepower, I'm going to put my dollar on Firepower, but if he's not Firepower, my second guess, if I was a, uh, if I was a least smarter betting man, Ezekiel Stain. Oh, okay. Obadiah Stain's son from the comic books. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, my bet. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go very, very wild. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot. I'm going to shoot for the moon. And hopefully I'll land among some stars. Okay. Uh, Anthony Ramos, Doctor Doom, 2022. Let's do it. Bring in the Fantastic Four. Bring in Doctor Doom Doctor in the Doom? Iron Heart series. In the Iron yeah. Heart series? Cool. Sure, why not? Fuck it, why not? Why not? Kang, look, Kang the Conqueror gets introduced in the Loki TV series. Uh, Doctor Doom can get introduced in the Iron Heart series. Yeah, but he's just Victor. They just call him Victor? No, they just call him Vic. They call, him, call Vic. him Vic. Call him Vic. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what? I'll put a dollar on that. Full whole doll yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. And you're saying Mysterio for Bruce Campbell. Multiversal Absolutely. Mysterio for Bruce Campbell. Absolutely. That uh, is the one I'm confident in. I am a betting person, and I am going to put a full whole American dollar. A full dollar. Probably what the shares of Ford Motor Company is going to be worth in about two weeks. I'll put a full dollar that Bruce Got Campbell... Him is not going to be playing Mysterio. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be playing a villain, but he is, in fact, going to be playing a variant. 
of Tony Stark. He is going to be superior to Tony Stark. He is going to be your superior Iron Man. I can ooh, see, ooh, ooh. like, he's got the chin and everything, but he's a little bit older. You know, he doesn't look so great in the suit anymore. You know, I think, yeah, I think, I think we might have the chin, Bruce the Chin Campbell, as as these this uh, Illuminati Iron Man. Because I'm already thinking we're getting Captain Carter. Uh, I think we're going to be getting, um, uh, we are going to be getting uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character from Black Panther as Black Panther instead of T'Challa, or it could be Killmonger. As, as Black Panther on the Illuminati board. I think we're going to be getting Pre- Professor Xavier. I think we're going to be getting, you know, uh, uh, Defender Strange is going to be the one, the one that we saw that has the long hair. Yeah. Uh, and then I think maybe either Namor or Black Bolt will be on this Illuminati board. But yeah. Uh, okay. Superior, yeah, Superior Iron Man, Bruce Campbell. I'll put those full. And you can you can take it here. here if, 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 if I'm wrong, Zoe gets a dollar. If Zoe's wrong, I get a dollar. That's three dollars on the line. But if we're both wrong, nobody gets a dollar. If we're both wrong, we donate the dollars. That sounds perfect. You know what? That's yeah. great. That's great. I, I, that sounds yeah. great. I, I'm we'll right figure here. out what needs donated to at that time because it'll be a while. I'm sure before we find out the answer to any.